There's a bushfire raging outside my house And there's a bushfire raging inside my life Deep burning anger has come into my heart I decide not to break things Cause I've done that before and it doesn't work Well there's a bushfire burning inside my heart I don't know where to go, but I just make a start. Sit down, da 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 da. Well, I sit down. Well, there's a deep, 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 deep desire in me. I'm stuck in a shell, but I want to be free. And I got that weird, old, funny feeling again. But I'm a burning man Said the bird There's 
There's a bushfire raging outside my house And there's a bushfire raging inside my life Deep burning anger has come into my heart I decide not to break things Cause I've done that before and it doesn't work Well there's a bushfire burning inside my heart to go but I just make a start sit down well I sit down well there's a deep 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 desire in me I'm stuck in a shell but I want to be free and I got that weird old funny feeling again Like a bush, but I'm a burning man Said uh, burn, burn, burn another one down Burn, burn, burn another one down Burn, burn, burn another one down to the
Well, hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Live Cook channel. Uh, my name is Benny Masekomeng, your guest host for tonight's Live Cook show. Um, I know a lot of you would be wondering, where is the regular Mr. Pete Goffwood, um, your host that always hosts these shows? But um, I'm happy to tell you that he's recovering from his few days of uh, birthday celebrations. And uh, as you know, the older you get, the longer it takes for you to recover from such. <laughs> I'm only kidding, Pete. Uh, happy birthday. We at Live Cook would like to say um, happy birthday and hope that you are having a blast. And we can't, have you to, we can't wait to have you uh, back again on the show. Yeah? Enjoy your celebrations and don't drink as much as I would. Okay, cool. Now let's get back to the business at hand. Uh, just want to say thank you to all of you that are joining us tonight. Uh, let us know where in South Africa uh, you're cooking from and who you're cooking with or who you're cooking for. Uh, and remember, it's uh, an, an interactive show, so we'd like to hear from you um, what you're doing, where you are at the uh, cooking stage while cooking with us. And we have a few people that are also joining us on um YouTube and already we have quite a few people and I'm just panning through the list here. Uh, we've got uh, Mark Engel saying hi everybody. Hope you have fun tonight. We've got Annette Stipp, uh, Lauren Hutchinson, um, Lauda Conway saying great chefs also lined up. We'll definitely be here more often again. So thank you. And uh, we've got Nathan Bottis from Melrose, which is up the road from me here, um, and Riker Scotte, uh, and a whole lot of other people who I will also be saying hi to um, during the live cook. But thank you so much for joining us, and I uh, hope we're going to have a blast tonight. So, as you know, this is a series where you get to cook along with famous chefs, um, and tonight we are cooking with um, one of my favorite chefs, and who's a Scotsman who lives in Stellenbosch, you know, uh, Schizophrenia much? Well, I would love to welcome uh, Chef George Jardine. Georgie, welcome to the live cook. Good evening, brother. Benny. How's good? it? I'm good. Yeah, I'm man. good. I'm good. good to have you here. And uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. Those things in Georgia, man. It's so hot. Tonight. So much. Let me tell you. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um, it's raining here. It's pissing down. I wish I was in Cape Town. The weather here is not so lovely. Uh, but, uh, you know, with what uh, is in store for us, with what you're going to be cooking, uh, I'm sure it'll fit in very well with the weather that's going on um, here in Joburg. But, uh, yeah, I miss the sunshine too. But I know we'll be getting that in the next couple of days. But uh, otherwise, it's been a while. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. We've been, uh, well, it's been open and closed, but when we're open, we've been busy, so things are good. Man. We're surviving. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. COVID has hit us really, really bad, but uh, we can thank you know COVID for having such a a, a nice live cook um, streaming and cooking with a whole lot of people uh, in different pa different parts of the country at the same time. Uh, at least that's one thing to be yeah. thankful for. But uh, at least things are opening up. Yeah, and lots of time at home with the family, man. It's been that's been good a good part of it. Yeah. So, um, George, tell us about what you're going to be cooking uh, with us uh, tonight and why have you chosen this recipe? Okay, well, we're, we're searing a bit of sirloin tonight. We've got a lovely Karen sirloin um, here with a charred aubergine. We're going to make a charred aubergine puree, um, roasted baby tomatoes and some cream spinach. We get a perfect dish for a late summer's day like it is tonight. Yeah, man, that sounds so good enough to eat, but uh, I'm looking forward to um, all of this and uh, also, you know, sipping a couple of glasses of wine while cooking with you and uh, hopefully answering a couple of questions that, are, you know, our guests are going to be asking and, and, and cooking along with us. But uh, uh, to all of those that are cooking for the first time with us tonight, uh, please highlight us and don't forget to ask questions, as I mentioned before. 
Um, we'll have the recipe on the screen for you, but you may want to ask George, you know, a couple of questions why he chose the dish that he chose and, and uh, different accompaniments to this um, sirloin. Uh, why is it particular that you would prepare, you know, such um, vegetables or accompaniments in the way that he has chosen to do that? Um, and we, you know, value participation in terms of answering questions and interacting with us uh, on this uh, particular live cook. Uh, and this is your chance, really, to uh, pick chef's, uh, Chef George's brain uh, and become a better home cook um, in that process, so, you know, and also probably getting to know him better with other questions that you're probably going to uh, ask him. And I hope they're not too personal, but I'm sure George won't mind, you know, giving you an insight on um, his life uh, and what he goes through. But uh, don't be bleak if we don't answer any of your questions. You know, all these questions come in at a high rate and we'll get to them as as and when they come up but uh please use the hashtag live cook channel in the comment section below if you want to be part of the action but don't forget to book to cook using one of our partners uh on your screen now a warm welcome to all of you uh loyal live cooks uh and some of you uh are new guests but but uh, we welcome Cornelia May and Vuyoga Zinjongwe and uh, Vil Holtes. Vil Holtes. I hope I pronounce, I'm pronouncing your name um, or your surname properly. Uh, but otherwise, please forgive me. And remember, please interact with us on YouTube. Like I said, use the Live Cook uh, channel uh, hashtag uh, and uh, in the comment section below. And I'll be reading some of the questions. Um, and some of the comments that you guys are going to be uh, putting through. So to get on with the business and not waste a lot of time, let us talk about what's in uh, the box that you have received today from uh, Daily Dish with um, all the ingredients that we need for tonight's dish. And I'm going to let George take us through all of those ingredients one by one. Okay, nice. So... I was excited to get the box. I'm actually quite nervous about cooking one of my own recipes, man, but we'll get through it together. Um, obviously, the the star ingredient, or is it? I think the vegetables might be the star ingredient, but the carrot beef, beautiful bit of sirloin. Got some Swiss chard. Greens are good for you. Got to eat your greens, they get strong. Beautiful tomatoes, perfect time of year for tomatoes, and of course, the aubergines. Another one of my favorite ingredients. We've got some brown lentils. We're going to use the lentils to thicken the aubergine puree. A bit of garlic, some rosemary, and then, um, of course, we've got a bit of soy sauce. So I don't know if this is a fusion dish or a confusion dish, but it works. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I've seen uh, recipes that have a, a whole lot more uh, ingredients and confusing for our guests and I think this one is perfect because uh, you know it's, it's not such a long list and uh, I'm sure everybody's going to be able to keep up and make sure that they finish the dish with us on time uh, of, of course we're not going to be you're not going to be as fast as George but sometimes you know people have super blazing stoves uh, and fast forward cooking that they might be able to overtake you George uh, are you not worried about that <laughs> no well <laughs> let's see I actually just had a thought. I hope I'm not going to run out of gas. <laughs> it will be fine. Maybe I should light a fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So to the guys at Karen Beef that supplied us with tonight's premium class A beef, which I like, you know, very much because it's a lovely aged sirloin with a nice fat cap and very low marbling. So um, it's been aged to perfection. You can visit... Um, Karen Beef at www.karenbeef.co.za for more information. So um, don't forget that you will need all your basics that you have at, you know, in the house. Obviously, we won't include salt and pepper and some um, oil, whether it's olive oil. And I think tonight we're using canola oil. So um, get those yes. and you must have those at, at hand because it's something that you would need while cooking this. You would also uh, would have found some other goodies um, in your box, which has been, uh, for us, it's been the first time that we've had so much in the box. But um, 
We are lucky that we have uh, Zevenwacht as our partners for this um, live cook. And they've supplied us with not one, not two, but three bottles of wine. And I'm going to start with um, uh, the wine that um, George has brilliantly paired with the lovely dish that we're going to be cooking tonight, uh, which is a Cab Sav. And, and um, George, if you can uh, tell us more about uh, the wine that you've chosen and um, how it, it pairs with, with uh, your dish for tonight. Yeah, well, I mean, firstly, I mean, Zevin, Zevin fact is actually a neighbor of ours at, at Jordan. And, you know, it's just across the hill. You can walk it in five minutes or it's a 15 kilometer drive around it. Um, Cab Sab, Stellenbosch is famous for Cab Sab. It's the perfect thing to have um, with a steak. You know, the soy is adding a bit of complexity and the rich creaminess of the aubergine also goes very well there. For the cabinet serving so i think it's a good it's a good uh, match for us tonight and i think it's nice to you know it's a 2017 but there's a bit of aging in the wine um i think it's going to show up well if we if we uh okay cool. we'll finish it before we finish the dish <laughs> well i've already started mine but i i started with um something very young um, that is also included in the box and um, really fantastic wines coming from Zevenbach. And uh, uh, the one that I'm uh, sampling right now at the moment, it's a young Sauvignon Blanc. Um, it is very crispy uh, with tropical um, flavors in there uh, and a very young wine that is very enjoyable to drink it, you know, as soon as you get your hands on it. Uh, you don't have to keep it for a long time and, and, and wait for it to mature, but very nice uh, and easy drinking. Um, goes very well with fish, white meat and chicken. Um, and also you can have it with a little bit of pork, which I, I, I really enjoy. Uh, but a really nice wine, an easy drinking wine. Um, and obviously for these um, late uh, summer nights that you can enjoy this, um, under some shade and cooling down. And then next, we also have another blend from Zevenwacht, which is a 2018 um, Zeven Ruot, uh, which is also a lovely blend uh, that goes well with flame grilled meats like, uh, you know, your lamb chops, you know, with a bit of fat in it and, and, and lovely lamb, uh, mild flavors that you get from um, flame grilled uh, lamb chops, but also. So uh, I love it with, and as you might have heard uh, not so long ago, that I love pork and it also goes very well with sticky uh, pork ribs. Uh, so lovely wines and uh, thank you to Zevenwacht for partnering with Live Cook um, on this um, uh, episode today with George. And thank you for giving us extra wine that you know, touches a bit on some of the ingredients that George is going to be preparing with this dish where you can actually enjoy it with um, any of these wines. Uh, but obviously, as you know, we love wine um, with things that uh, go well with them that, that we enjoy. So um, I think that you will find something that you are able to enjoy um, with any of these wines. Um, give them a shot. Uh, they'll be able to satisfy your wine needs. Um, so George... Um, you know, people have to always start um, getting their things in order. Um, whenever you are yeah. uh, cooking, uh, you have to make sure that you've got your stoves and pots and pans ready close to you so you don't walk about uh, in the kitchen and running like a headless uh, chicken. Um, is there yeah. any other tip that you want um, some, of our, uh, um, uh, some of those <clears throat> that are cooking with us? To get ready before um, we start with the cooking. Well, I've got a couple of small bowls here um, ready. I've got a tray to grill the tomatoes on. Small pots and utensils. I think everybody's yeah. going to have them at hand mostly. I think most importantly, we should get the oven on. Get the oven on and get it heating up. That would okay, be my cool. top tip. In fact, so that's what I'm going to do. 
All righty. Um, so um, while we um, get ready with all of those things, there are also some lovely things that were in the box that were packed um, for this live cook. And, um, you know, it keeps getting better. So we also got something that you're going to have after um, we finish cooking George's dish. Um, and after you've finished enjoying it with your uh, uh, friends and loved ones, there is uh, some lovely sweet goodies uh, from our sponsors, Cadbury. So for the first 150 uh, ticket holders that have been gifted uh, a special Easter dessert kit for, for you to make fridge cake cups. If you didn't book in time, Cadbury's has included some Cadbury fluffies. And I want to show you, um, for those that didn't book in time, here are the Cadbury fluffies that were uh, in your box. But for the first 150, there are also extra things that were uh, packed in there. I'll start with the mini eggs, mini eggs that we're going to uh, do with our fridge uh, cake cups uh, later on. And also we've got top deck bunnies, top deck bunnies. You probably would have received about three of them, depending on how many you booked to cook for. But those are the sweet treats that we have uh, for you, which... Um, were included in your, in, in your box uh, for you to enjoy. Um, so as I said, three slabs of dairy top deck milk bunnies and 12 fluffies uh, and a pack of mini eggs so that you can build your own fridge uh, cake cups for dessert. So check out the video and recipe that you can pause and make sure that you've got all the instructions down uh, to the T and let's face it. A delicious chocolate dessert is just a, um, a way to end tonight's outstanding meal. Wow, that's certainly something to give a go. Um, I'm definitely going to do this with my daughter um, after this. Uh, it's something that you can, you know, have fun doing it with the kids. Uh, but on to the business at hand. Uh, I'm already getting hungry, not only for dessert, but uh, nearly finishing my wine. And I hope everybody's got their wine in hand and they're ready to go. Uh, and George is going to share his knowledge with us and uh, hopefully... Uh, all of you that are cooking with us are going to come out better cooked. So, George, take us through the first step. Oven on 108 degrees um, while the air press for running there. We're going to start with the aubergines. Okay, and the, the aubergine puree, we're going to char these aubergines. So we're going to keep one aubergine for the garnish. Let's keep the nice. Okay, and then the two over to the stove. Okay, I'm just going to use the rack from the oven on the burner on the hottest burner you've got, and I'm going to burn the aubergines. If you haven't got a, if you're using an electric oven, you can put the oven on grill and just put them in the oven as close to the grill as you can go, but you've got to keep an eye on them because they might uh, catch fire. 
So that's going to take a few minutes. I think <clears throat> while we're doing that, we'll prepare the other one for the garnish. So just going to top and tail this one. I'll just top it and then peel. Uh, so, George, um, thank you for uh, saying that they must keep an eye on the grill with those uh, aubergines that are charring there. You know, if you've got smoke detectors in the house, uh, it's always an, uh, a good idea to make sure that you don't have uh, anything that starts to burn and then we have sprinklers on and that ruins your um, cooking. But yeah, it's a good thing to make sure that you keep an eye on it. You know what, Benny, the best, the best thing would be to actually have a fire outside and do it on the fire man then you get that smoky flavor from the wood also well and i i can imagine that it's it's uh if you're gonna do it outside with the fire you're gonna get that lovely smoky um taste that's gonna or uh, flavor that's gonna uh be injected by um the smoke and the and the charcoal or the wood that you're using yeah yeah okay so while the the length the aubergines are grilling on the stove there I'm going to use the, we're going to cook the lentils, but this just in a pot with lots of um, water. It's nothing too complicated here. And then lentils, we're going to cook until soft. It's going to take about 15 minutes. And then we're going to use that to just add a gives a bit of structure to the puree because the aubergine when it's cooked is very soft. So this is just going to firm it up a little bit. So that goes on the gas. And we let it, let it cook. No need for any salt or pepper in the lentils. It's main, it is purely for the, for the texture and the thickening properties. Um, George, while, while the, while the um, lentils are boiling, um, can you use um, other types of lentils in terms of color? Because you get your orange lentils and then you get your, you know, some might use split peas. Is that uh, another uh, alternative that you can use instead of your brown lentils? Or it's best to use the brown lentils? I think, I mean, we use the brine lentils because the, the end result, the aubergine is with the char on the outside of the skin. The puree is, you know, it's a gray color. So you could, because it's not very much, you could use yellow lentils. You could even use a, a different pulse of pea or something. I mean, it is really for that, for the, for the fiber and the texture that it gives to the puree. Okay, um, so, and, and George, so I continue. Um, sorry, before you carry on, yeah, sorry, before you carry on, um, you know, yeah. you said uh, when you start boiling the lentils, you um, add them to cold water. Uh, why not boiling water? Well, no, I used, I used the water from the kettle. Actually, it sneakily boiled the kettle before I, so I might be a step ahead of everybody else. <laughs> So it doesn't doesn't really matter. So I, I, you can use cold water, but then, or, or you can just carry on with boiling water if if you, if you wanna. Um, you can use cold water. You can, it, yeah, you can use boiling water. You know, I mean, basically, okay. normally you would soak lentils before you use them, but for the yeah. sake of this puree, because, like I said, just for the for the texture it gives to the puree, you can just straight away just boil them. As hot, use as hot water as you can get, because it'll be quicker. Okay, but I can smell my aubergines okay. now. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go over here. Okay, are they getting it? Okay, so you'll see these are going to start burning. And you can see the smoke. We haven't got smoke detectors, thankfully. But, um, <laughs> and you can smell that. It's getting a real char smell. You know, this is going to take about 15 minutes. To cook through, it's going to go soft and fat. The moisture from the aubergines is going to evaporate. Um, then we're going to blend it up. But let's okay. do our aubergine for the for the garnish. So the peeled aubergine. 
we just obviously in the restaurant piece, we want to make everything look uniform and precise, you know. But I mean, if for it, cooking at home, it's not so necessary for it to be exactly precise. So I've cut the aubergine in half. I just cut the bottom bit off, so it flattens on the on the board. Otherwise, it wobbles around too much. And you're going to chop your fingers off. So the same. Straight in half. Okay, and in, into eight pieces. So that's we're gonna glaze that with the with the soy and the honey. Um, but that's what you're looking for. Yeah. All roughly the okay. same size because you want them to take the same amount of time to cook. George, while you're doing this, um, I have a special question from a friend of yours uh, who's supposedly uh, recovering from his birthday uh, celebrations and he says you're looking really good and it looks like you lost a bit of weight um, can you tell us uh, what your secret is chef <laughs> yeah I wonder who that friend is well I'm going to be <laughs> honest with you Benny I, I, I started lockdown about 10 kilos lighter than I am now it's definitely I've enjoyed a bit too much of the good life during lockdown. So I guess there's okay. my secret to my good life is enjoying life to its most. Nah, that's that's the spirit, George. That's the spirit, man. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you can see well, you can't see here. So my lentils are boiling. Just keep an eye on the origins. I don't know if you can see the you can see the moisture bubbling around the origin. Basically, the, the skin is sealing the aubergine inside, and then it's, it is boiling furiously inside that aubergine right now. It's going to—it's actually could be quite a good weapon if you if somebody came into our house now. We could throw the aubergines at them and, and scare them away. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to carry on with the. With the aubergine for the garnish. So I've got a pan on the stove. I'm going to just swap over the lentils and use a bigger flame. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to char each of these aubergines in a little bit of oil, and then we're going to make a, a slight reduction with the soy sauce and the honey and glaze those aubergines in the, in the soy and honey. So just a little bit of oil. This is canola oil. You can use, you could use sunflower oil or olive oil. There's no flavor coming across here, so it's just the, the stuff that's sticking to the pan. And then obviously, just keep an eye on your aubergines. I don't know if you can see that, then see how soft it's getting. So George, obviously, um, with with um, cooking it over, charring it over um, an open flame makes it cook quicker. But if you were to put it in the oven, um, in terms of timing, um, obviously um, it's going to be slower than the, the stove top. So how long would it take for the guys that are using the oven and not uh, charring it on on on, on open flames? <clears throat> Well, I mean, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be instead of 10 minutes on the gas, it's going to be 15 to 20 minutes in the oven. 15, 20 um, but minutes. Yeah. Okay. The, best, the best would be, I mean, if, if you've got an electric oven, you know, they've got that grill element on the top of the oven. So the best, I mean, if you get that thing really hot, then it's almost, it's going to be the same effect as using the, the gas. It's, it's going to be as quick. It's just going to take longer to heat up. Okay, cool. Okay, so these, my aubergines are cooked. I'm going to blend the, I'm using a Nutribill, but you can use any, any blender, 
you know, we, it needs to be quite a, we want it to be smooth. So, you know, any electrical blenders will work fine. So I'll just take my origins. Okay, and you see, how do you know when they're ready? You can, you can see how soft this is, and it just immediately collapses. There's no give. Just take off the stock, straight into the blender. Wow, that's simple. That's easy. Simple as that. Now we're just waiting for the lentils. But while we wait for the lentils, um, we're going to start frying the aubergine blocks. I'm going to get rid of my... George, while you're doing that, we're okay, getting so um, some lovely comments here. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, George. While, while you're doing that, we're getting some lovely comments here from um, our guests. Uh, um, and Lauren Hutchinson is asking, why are you not wearing a kilt? <laughs> yeah. I you know, I mean, I think the, apart from the obvious hygiene reasons why I'm not wearing a coat, <laughs> you know, it is, it's nine, nine feet of uh, thick, ruined tart. And I really, kilts are not made for this kind of climate, you know. Maybe if they come up, yeah. with, come up yeah. with a South African, a South African light kilt, you know. <laughs> might be onto something. Like that, yeah, man. <laughs> Okay, so you can see the pan is hot. I'm going to drop the aubergines in. Yeah, I'm just checking the lentils. Still a little bit of crunchy. And then, so. Basically, we're going to char the aubergines evenly on each side. And then you've, everybody's got a little packet of soy and some honey. We're going to use all of the honey and half of the soy. And simply put it into, I'm going to put it into a cup. And I'm going to blast it in the microwave for two minutes. Let's get it boiling and reducing a little bit. Now we're going to coat the aubergines in once they've been cooked. So, okay, George. Um, goes. George, what, why, while you're doing that, and um, I just want to recap on what we've done with uh, some of our uh, uh, the people that are cooking along with us, uh, just to get them to the stage that we are in. So we started with step one, which was doing the aubergine puree. You boil the lentils for 15 to 20 minutes and charred the aubergine over the flames for um, about 10 to 15 minutes. And then you cut the stalk off and you put them in a blender. You're just waiting for the lentils to soften up a bit. And then we're going to blend it all up. Um, and then uh, we started on step two, which was your soy glazed aubergine, which you're about to do now, but you are... Um, heating up the honey and the soy uh, to start coloring yes. those cubed aubergines. Okay. Just for everybody yeah. to get on um, where we are, uh, that quick recap. Uh, but now we're going to do the browning on all sides for those uh, cut aubergines. Yeah. Okay. So cool. you can see the stump, the char on this. So I'm going to turn these over. That's what we're looking for on each side of it. Okay, then my, so the soy and the honey, I've still got half the soy for our sauce at the end. 
in the library. There's Louise's uh, coffee from this morning's breakfast. I think she can finish it. Coffee in the library. Okay, I'm going to give it two minutes in the microwave with full, full power. George, why are we doing that in the microwave? I know that um, I know that people see chefs using their hands a lot, uh, especially on hot things. And uh, don't you get your fingers burnt while checking the hot water and the soft lentils, right? Like you're doing now. <laughs> no, in, in um, so there's a I had a procedure done in the UK. It's quite common with the chefs, man. They they remove <laughs> your nerves from your fingers. <laughs> and it's just, I mean, I, I don't know if you, I don't know if you were watching me trying to turn that aubergine with the tongs there, man. It's so difficult. I don't know. It's, tongs are good for some things, but, you know, it's for, for yeah, years I, and years, I mean, turning it fingers. Yeah, I think as chefs, we, we, we used to that because you also want to feel, you know, um, the food that you're cooking. Obviously, as an amateur, you can use all those tongs and be safe and all of that. But obviously, this yeah. is done um, in a safe manner, but also gives you some feel to what you're cooking and, and making sure that it's at the right uh, state or temperature. Definitely. I mean, it is, it is a very tactile thing, cooking. I mean, you've got to feel what you do. Um, okay, so the lentils. Yeah. They're almost done. So I've got my jug with the aubergines in it. We've got a packet of uh, creme fraiche. You could use sour cream. You could use you could use yogurt. I mean, this is quite a bit similar to a baba ganache. You know, I mean, it's a, definitely got a bit of a Middle Eastern feeling going on with this beer. But the creme fraiche goes in. I've, I haven't used all the creme fraiche. I've used about half of the packet. Obviously, some people's aubergines are bigger than other aubergines. And, but, so just start off with half. You will blend it up, and maybe we need to add some more. Maybe we don't. Okay, I'm quickly going to strain my lentils. You can see. The lentils are obviously swollen because they're cooking. And they're soft. There's a little bit of a crunch, but they're, they're cooked. So I'm not too worried about the little bit of a crunch because they're going to blame them. So I'm going to strain off the... Strain off the water. And then the lentils into the puree. Again, I'm going to add half and then we'll taste it afterwards and we'll see if we need to add a bit more. The lentils are purely for the structure of the puree, so it's not a, we're not looking for a flavor. Okay, then I'm <clears throat> on with the lead. Hopefully this thing doesn't explode now. Let's see. Okay, let's not forget our aubergines on the stove here. Okay, I can feel the aubergines on the stove charring <clears throat> nicely on the outside and they're beginning to get nice and soft. So we're getting the flavor from the jar. It's also seeding the outside of it. It's making it nice and crispy on the outside and it's soft and luscious inside. Let's just have a look at the puree. Oh, 
Okay, George, while, while you're doing that, obviously you're going to let that cool down a bit before you put it in the piping bag or you're going to cool it in the piping bag? <clears throat> I'm going to put it in the piping bag and I'm going to put the piping bag in the fridge. Okay, and uh, uh, while you're doing that, uh, yeah. it looks like it's getting hot in the kitchen and you're sweating. So you need to take a sip of something, Dude. man. You've got a lovely wine there in front of you. <laughs> Dude, it's so hot here. I don't know what's going on, man. <laughs> I'm a Scotsman, and I think once, you, yeah, once you do that, we're gonna go um, um, to an ad break soon. Uh, while you're getting the um, step one, as in uh, the puree into the piping bag and cooling it down. Man, while, while the puree is, is, is cooling down, I um, am watching the comments and um, it seems like a whole lot of people are, you know, uh, right along with you and some are a bit slow. They're still trying to blend their uh, aubergines and asking if the skin goes on or not. The skin went into yeah. that blender. So you need that skin yeah. for flavor and that smoky charred um, flavor it introduces. Um, yeah, but it seems like everybody is um, right along with you uh, and cooking along with you <clears throat> nicely. Um, but most of them are finishing off their wines. Lucky thing, we've got three bottles of wine and not one. So if you're running out on one, open up another bottle um, and you sure be able to catch up with what George is doing. But loving how the dish is going so far. We're done with step one. We've also um, just re recapping everything while you're putting everything into that uh, piping bag. Um, we've got those many, aubergine cubes many. that have browned in the pan. Yes, 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 George. <clears throat> Just uh, before I put the puree in the bag, I seasoned it with salt and pepper. It's quite important. Oh, okay. So, so the seasoning goes after um, everything and after yeah. you've blended it so you get the right taste. But George, can I also ask you something? Yeah. If, if um, with something that you're going to cool down like that and you season it um, while it's still hot before cooling it down, doesn't the seasoning intensify when it gets cold? Well, I, I think actually, I, th I actually think the opposite. I think when you, you know, I think I would tend to over season something that you're going to serve cold. You know, if you make a terrine okay. or something okay. like that, you definitely, you, you definitely over season it. And then when it's cold, but you know, I think salt, salt is definitely for everyone's own taste. Man. So you put as much salt as you want, or, you know, you, some people wouldn't put salt. That's fine. Now, cool. I like the thing that you just did there. I, I always um, season as and taste as as I cook. So to, just to make sure uh, that everything is is balanced. And obviously, when you're tasting everything in isolation, you must also mind the fact that once everything is put together and that you season it differently, um, that all those all that seasoning has to come together. So you don't over season uh, while cooking. And obviously, just before plating, you make sure that you taste everything to make sure that the seasoning is balanced and if you need to add more. Uh, it's always better to add more than 
uh, <clears throat> thinking of taking it out because you can't. Yeah, I know. I mean, you've got to. The aubergines that they're getting caramelized with the soy. At the end, we're going to make a sauce with the soy, and soy is, in all essence, a, it's a salt. You know, the, the Asians use it as a seasoning um, because of its salty saltiness. So you've got to bear that in mind as well when we're seasoning stuff now. That the sauce and some components yeah. are naturally quite salty. So I think we can finish off the soy glazed aubergines. I'm just going to check my honey and soy. That was two minutes. I'm going to give it one more minute. Um, now this, what we want here is we want the aubergines to be very hot from the pan. And we want the honey and soy to be very hot from the microwave. We're going to mix them together. I'm going to toss them in a bowl and then I'm going to strain it through a colander. And what the effect that we're trying to achieve is this, the soy and the honey is going to caramelize on the outside of the aubergine. It's going to become sticky. Um, you know, the, the honey is going to set a little bit. So that's what we're looking for. We don't want to soak it in. We just want to add enough to fla flavor the aubergine. Okay, uh, George, can you please show us the uh, aubergine just before uh, we add the soy and honey glaze? Just hold it up to the camera so they can see what the color looks like on those uh, cubed aubergines. Yeah, if you can hold up the pan to, okay. to the camera, yes. Oh, lovely. Yeah, okay. Okay. So Nice and hot, colored on each side. Into the bowl. This is the honey and soy. I'm going to pour it over. Then we want to strain off the excess. Okay, so you can see this aubergines glaze nicely. Honey and soy. Oh, lovely. Okay, now we're through. Keep that somewhere safe. Okay, George, I like I like the fact that um, you know you're showing us exact. So I like the fact that you're showing us exactly how it is because you know how sometimes people will just leave it in that soy and honey glaze and it will soak up all of that because an aubergine is like a sponge. It just you know absorbs all the liquid that you um, can put it in, so it doesn't really overpower and get yeah. over seasoned, especially with. Uh, uh, with the soy in there. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to move on to the next step. Good with that? Yes, creamed spinach. I'm just going to, just before we do the creamed spinach, Benny, I'm going to take the sirloin out of the packet just to, to let it dry up a little bit before we cook it. Okay. I mean, this is, is obviously wet aged in the bag. Yeah. We just want to, before we cook it, we just want to let it air a little bit, you know, dry off. So the cream charts. Let's start with the charts. I'm running out of bowls, man. I'm, I'm just wondering who's going to do the dishes after this. <laughs> I'm going to have to do the washing up. Then. <laughs> 
I'm sure you got more bowls than me. Yeah, but the more I use, the more I have to clean. <laughs> well, you have plenty Luis, time to do that with, Luis, with, with, with some wine to drink after. Yeah, with some seven by one. Okay, so I'm just yeah. slicing the chards. You know, I kept it in the bunch. <clears throat> and we're slicing into the leaves into strips. We would, this is, I mean, a shift and that would be a little bit finer than this, but you know, this for all intents and purposes, we're shifting out in the jar. Okay. Well, George, um, our, our, our guests and, and people that are cooking along with us uh, were lucky that you know, um, they got their uh, Swiss chard already um, chopped up in a pack. So uh, that takes oh, it's know, a chop. Uh, the time from, from, from yeah, uh, it's probably also clean. Okay, so, so uh, I have to chop uh, my own chard. only one that just got, on got them home. Oh. <laughs> just making it easy for them. Okay, so the, the chart, I'm going to get another bowl. I've just put the kettle on, Benny. I'm going to put the chard in a bowl and I'm going to pour over boiling water just to wilt it. I don't want to cook it too much. It's just going to cook in the sauce. But it's just to soften it up. Okay. George, while you're doing that, somebody says, um, okay, it's actually Lauren Salt. I think Lauren um, says, what, if, what happens if the honey soy looks like glue? No draining needed um what would be the cause for that it would be uh they left it too long in the microwave well, and it thickened up and what can yeah. they do to loosen it up you, you could add just a touch of water um to loosen it up i you know if, yeah i think so that would be the base one but to pick the aubergines out first okay, cool. add the water with the aubergines in there. Okay, I'm sure Lauren Salt got that. Just add a touch of water just to loosen it up. Um, hope that answers your question. Oh, actually, I was wrong. Sorry. Some of the people got the Swiss chard whole like you have, so they've had to slice it. My one came in chopped, so I guess they thought my knife skills were not that great. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> You're the VIP. Man. Cool. Okay, so, of course, but very important, we've got to wash the chard because the chard is notorious for having little grains of sand in it. So I'm just going to quickly wash this under some drying water. Okay, in the bowl. I should, okay, I'm gonna leave it in the cone. I just thought of a good plan, Benny. I'm gonna pour the water in like that. Okay, the kettle's boiled. And you can immediately see this chart wilting. is wilted. I'm going to strain that off and then we're going to make the sauce sauce for the chip. Okay, so creamed cream spinach, man. I it is probably one of my most favorite things in the whole world and we always use it i actually feel i don't know maybe we should stop using it so much but it jordan and jordan <laughs> we always got it's every way, way huh? so <clears throat> it is but it's delicious right? yeah so 
So I've got a small pot. We've got an echo. Quite a thick mesh knot. Just so that it cooks the chard. And you, you know, I don't like the cream spinach when the sort of cream is really loose and it's watery and whatever. It must be rich and thick and mostly it must be chopped. So we're going to start it in the pan with a little block of butter. 20 grams. That's all we need. You could use margarine if you've got margarine you could use. You could even use canola oil or uh, olive oil. I mean, it's just, it's the fat to combine the flour for the sauce. But, you know, I'm going to stick to the traditional method and use of that bar. Well, George, for me, I, I, I find that, you know, uh, for such things as, as uh, especially like a sauce, whether it's a bechamel, whether it's just uh, you know, that base sauce, that you can make a whole batch and divide it into smaller cubes that you would need, you know, uh, as and when you need it, when you're making something that requires like a bechamel sauce, um, instead of making it uh, from scratch each time. And especially if uh, you have time on your hands and, and you know, as chefs, we always like to prepare things um, ahead of time. Uh, I find that it gets very easy yeah. um, when you have pre-prepared yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, and just, I mean, cut it into blocks and keep it in the freezer, man. You'll be happy one day when you find yeah. the, the white sauce in your freezer. So I've got the butter smell. Saves you a there. whole lot of time. Yeah. We don't want to cook the, or grind the butter. We're just melting it. And then we're adding the same amount of flour as the butter. So 20 grams butter, 20 grams flour. And again, we don't, we're not cooking the flour, we're just cooking the paste. Then I add some milk. You should, I mean, in college you learn, you should have a, a, pot, a pot of milk hot on the side of the stove, you have to do this, but, you know, breaking the rules. But as you can see, it's not really making it. I was just about to, to, to comment on, on that, that um, I know I noticed using, um, you know, a flat wooden spoon there. Uh, a lot of people will be worried about getting lumps and stuff, but it'll still smooth it out, right? Yeah. Look, I mean, you could use a whisk. Um, but I mean, if, yeah. you know, if you do it and you add the milk gradually like this, then you're not going to have any lumps. And so you can see, I'm going to add a little bit more, but I'm not going to add much more than that. So it is quite thick. Okay, um, George, I know that, um, you know, terminology and names that we use, you know, mean different things uh, in different parts of the world. And and I know that, you know, South Africans, we used to... Um, uh, using spinach but um um any difference in between uh spinach and swiss chard well i mean swiss chard is chard and spinach is spinach i think i mean i've been um you know i've lived in south africa almost longer than i lived in scotland now so i consider myself maybe i'm half south african I, even, yes. I also call this cream spinach, but but the thing is, it's not spinach; it's chard. <laughs> so uh, spinach is a different vegetable. <laughs> I mean, it, you get the baby, the baby spinach. Um, yeah. You know, it's a very soft leaf. Um, it hasn't got the big white stalk on it. Also delicious, but I mean, a Swiss chard or spinach, as we like to call it, you know, it's got a bit of texture to it. The leaf is more crunchy. The stalk is crunchy. Yeah, and I actually I prefer the Swiss chard or the spinach, the South African spinach. 
Yeah. Okay, Benny, I'm just squeezing out all the water from this. Can you see that? Yeah. Obviously, there's a reason for that. You know, um, what part of it is not having a runny, um, you know, mixture when you when you put it in a pot with 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 that uh, bechamel. Uh, but any other reason sauce. for squeezing yeah. um, out the liquid? No, just purely to get the the liquid out. I mean, it is. So we're going for cream spinach. You know, I want it to be thick and. Um, delicious. If we add it in like that, it's all that water is going to go into the sauce and it's going to be sloppy. It's going to be like spinach soup. So that's the reason, only reason for squeezing it. Okay, I'm going to take out half of this bechamel. Again, we can always add more if we need more. Um, but I think a half is going to be enough. So. Okay, uh, George, while you're doing that, there is Nicole. Nicole Comerford is saying she completely missed the steps uh, and she wanted to know the amounts of butter, flour, and milk again as a recap. And, and I guess you can look at the uh, recipe. Yeah, so I mean, we did, we did 20 grams of butter, 20 grams of flour, and I would say um, it was about 50, 50 mils of milk. You know, so equal. Okay, there you go, Nicole. Okay, I'm going to go in with the spinach into the base now. Okay, yeah, and 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 yeah, um, all looking great. I just wanted to, while you're mixing um, all of that, uh, just a recap of um, everything that has been going on now. We have, uh, we on step three now where we did uh, the Swiss chard, which we um, then wilted with hot water uh, and did the bechamel sauce with uh, a little bit of butter, cream and uh, butter, flour and some milk um, and squeezed out the water from the Swiss chard so that it's not as runny and looks like soup. And right about now, George is um, already put the spinach in the pot and mixing it to make a lovely uh, creamy Swiss chart. That's step three. Yeah, now we've got a, um, a hard cheese in the box, which I'm gonna grate. It's a piece of Parmesan. And then we've also got the creme fish. I'm gonna add the at the end. Again, just to make it creamy and rich. So that we grate this whole bit of cheese. I'm using a microplane for, I mean, if anything, it just, you know, it's smaller bits of cheese and it's going to melt quicker. But I mean, like, there's nothing, you can grate it with any, any grater. Okay, George, um, uh, while you're doing that, I know we're going to finish off step three with the, um, the hard cheese going into the mixture and also uh, some creme fraiche. Uh, we're going to go into an ad, yeah. and I'm sure you, uh, your throat is aching for that um, sip of uh, yes. fermented grape juice from uh, Zevenwacht. So uh, while we do that, we're going to go through to an ad um, while you're doing the mixing. But cheers, man. I'm loving what's going on at the moment. Cheers. And lovely comments coming Excellent. through. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we're back now. Uh, we're going to be doing going on to step four after we finish putting that hard cheese and some creme fraiche uh, in that mixture with the um, wilted Swiss chard and the bechamel. Uh, so now we're going to get into step four with the roasted tomatoes. Yeah. <clears throat> Over to uh, you, just, George. Just before we get to that, Benny, just before we get there, so I need the cheese and a little bit of creme fraiche. And again, you've got to taste it. 
and we're going to season with a salt, salt and pepper. Okay, so the tomatoes. Okay, we're going to top and tail the tomatoes. I'm just going to give them a little wash before I cut them up. Love that about what you do. You know, uh, as chefs, we always want to make uh, the most healthiest and hygienically prepared food, obviously for consumption that people don't get sick and that um, it's always a good idea to make sure that uh, even though your vegetables and fruits, maybe for that reason, might come and clean, that it's always a good idea to give them another rinse in case something got onto them and make sure that there isn't any foreign uh, um, anything in them. Love that. Definitely. You know, even even when the packet says um, that it's been washed, no need to wash them. I always give it a wash just, just out of habit. Yeah. Just to make sure. Okay, so the tomatoes. Now, I know in the recipe it says we top and tail and cut in half, but it's really... What I want is I want the tomato to be about the same size as the aubergine cubes. You can see the cube there. So I'm just, for the tomatoes, I'm just going to top and tail them. Take the top off and the bottom off. And keep them, this, keep them similar size to our aubergine cubes that we made earlier on. George, I know you said top and tail, and sometimes that might be a foreign you know, um, words that we use and we in the kitchen, it's, it's common knowledge, but uh, uh, for somebody that is not accustomed to some of the names that we use in the kitchen, um, top and tail, please explain. Well, top and tail, we're cutting, cutting this, the head off and the bottom off. But I mean, it's just, you know, I mean, it is, an, it is something for aesthetics because I want the, the finished dish, I want the tomato to sit nicely on the beef. So we're just making them more uniform. They're taking a little bit off the top and then a little bit off the bottom where, the, where it was attached to the plant. Cool. So, okay, then we can, in a bowl, I'm just going to use this one. We're going to season them with salt and pepper. Just a touch of oil, just to coat them. Helps the seasoning stick to the tomatoes. So George, while you're doing that, I just want to inform yeah, you that I'm really, really impressed with with um, all the guys um, that we're cooking with. Um, it seems like, uh, and judging from the comments that I'm getting from YouTube, is that um, a lot of people are right there with you in terms of the steps. And everybody um, is, you know, not lagging behind, might have one or two people. But I'm really impressed with the fact that people are really doing this um, at the same level as you and at the same speed, which um, when we play it, it's going to make sense because everybody would be um, up to date with what's happening. Yeah. And then they can, they're obviously, if they keep up to the end, they're more than welcome to forward me their CVs for any potential employment opportunities. Yeah. Might be a position needed. Yeah, uh, there you go. So there you go. So, um, for uh, catching up and making sure that you're up to speed. Uh, who knows? You might uh, get something if you, you apply to George, but I think it takes more than that for anybody to get into your kitchen. <laughs> okay, so I've got a piece of garlic. It's been peeled. Um, I'm just going to slice it as thin as we can. Uh, in, the, in the restaurant, we would use the mandolin for this. 
so nice and thin and then each tomato is getting a bit of garlic on top of it like that and if you can see that there just watch your fingers There we go. And then into the oven. The oven we preheated to 180 degrees. These are going to roast with maybe five to ten minutes. So go that ahead. is step four nearly done. Um, yeah. While we waiting for the tomatoes to roast in the oven, um, we're moving on to step five which is the seared uh, uh sirloin steak right yeah the main part jenny i'm just so gonna george, take it so george earlier okay so earlier i no, I, I saw you taking out the the sirloin from from the packet obviously uh because it's wet aged you said you wanted to drain off the excess water so uh, I assume the reason for that is uh, when you put it in the in the pan that it doesn't start seeping all of these juices and start stewing. You want it to go in dry so that it gets that lovely brown color in the skillet, right? Definitely. I mean, I'm, we we use wet age. Um, we buy wet aged beef mostly. You know, I mean, I am from Scotland, and Scotland. Famous for dry aged meat when it's crusty and green on the outside, and you cut it off, and it's got that amazing dry aged flavor. But for you know, for a consistent product that we need in a restaurant where we can serve a hundred of the same thing on a daily basis, I buy um, wet aged sirloin. And what we do in the restaurant is when it comes in, we'll take it out of the packet and we'll leave it in the fridge for two or three days just to dry out. And you know the meat becomes more red. The, it when you fry it, it caramelizes nicely. So I mean, if anything, we could have taken this out. We could have left it in the fridge overnight, and it would have only only have been better. And I'm just going to dry it with a bit. Of, this is a clean lappy. I'm just getting rid of any of the moisture. So, just sorry, I, I see uh, we've got uh, another member of the family joining us. Uh, you mind telling us his name or her name? Oh, okay. Yeah, his, his name is Jack. And <laughs> I think he must have heard me talk about uh, sirloin, man, because as soon as the meat comes out, he shows up. Okay, I'm just yeah, trying to see. I like I'm like yeah. Jack in the kitchen. Right. Right down the middle. These are amazing steaks, man. That's huge. Okay, I'm going to season it. Salt and pepper. You can always be quite generous when you're seasoning meat. You don't have to be scared. Yeah. I learned from a good friend of mine who is uh, a regular host for uh, the live cook, uh, who's enjoying his, uh, who's still recovering from his birthday celebration, that um, salt helps with, obviously, um, it just extracts moisture from, from the meat. But the reason that we season it just before we grill it is just it releases all of those juices that help with caramelizing when you put meats onto a really hot skillet. That's where you get that um, lovely golden brown color. It comes from the juices that gets released yeah. that is helped by the seasoning um, just before you put it into that hot skillet. Definitely. Let me get a, a pan ready. I noticed that you, you, you specifically mentioned in this... Um, 
in, 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 the, in the recipe that uh, the, the skillet must be smoking. Yes. I, well, I mean, the thing is, <clears throat> as soon as the, the two big pieces of meat like this hit the pan, what does it do to the pan? It cools the temperature of the pan. Back. So if the pan is smoking hot, you know, it is too hot, but as soon as you add the steaks, it cools the pan down to the perfect temperature. So, I mean, that's the reason for it. And if, you, if the pan's not hot enough, then, like you just said, you know, the, all the juices come out, and then you end up boiling the steaks. We don't want that to happen. We want the caramelization. Yeah. We, want, we want that heat to seal the steak and keep all the juices inside. Yeah. So I'm just going to check on my tomatoes. Cool. Okay, you can see the starting to first open the garlic is starting to caramelize. I'm going to give these another maybe five minutes. Okay, uh, George, just another thing on the tomatoes. I, I noticed that because of the plant presentation, you know, and this is my take on this, the plant presentation uh, calls for uh, the cubes, the size of the um, aubergine that you cooped, you cooped earlier, that you have the soy and honey glazing on. So if you were to use yeah. like a whole piece of steak like that without cutting it into uh, those um, uh, bite size or two bite size pieces, would you use a normal whole big tomato instead of the cherry tomatoes? Or is it more for um, the sweetness um, and, and, and how tender the flavor is uh, of the cherry tomatoes versus a whole big tomato? I mean, I think the, so you've got a, a piece of aubergine that's bite-sized and you've got a tomato that's bite-sized. So the base for me would be to have a piece of steak a bit of aubergine, a bit of tomato in one mouthful so you can enjoy the whole flavor of the dish. So I think in restaurants, that's why we tend to, we almost portion every component of the dish to encourage people to try everything together. You know, some people, and it's everybody's choice, it's up to them how they want to eat. So some, you know, like my, my kids will eat the steak and then they'll play around with the tomatoes and maybe eat one or two of them, you know. They'll just eat the steak. But I want them to eat the aubergine and the tomato. So yeah. if you cut it up and you put them together, you almost force people to <laughs> to eat like that. Right? Okay, there, there's always sense um, uh, in the madness, you know? You just don't do things randomly. There's a reason why you do certain things the way that you do. I get that. Definitely. It's to encourage. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm waiting for the pan. Okay, with the steaks, we're going to, we've got a pack of rosemary in the, in the box, and we've got some garlic also, still left over. And I can smell this. As soon as I open the packet, there's such a, an amazing smell, rosemary. I mean, yeah. almost with everything. It's just so delicious. So we're going to take a handful of that. Yeah. And then these. These garlic cloves in the skin, I'm just going to smash them to break them up a bit. I'm not going to cut them up or anything, just break them. Okay, then my pan is almost there. It's thinking about smoking. I'm going to start with the steaks. I'm going to start on the fat. And I want to, I want basically, I want all the fat to be released from that. It's going to caramelize and go crispy. And then the fat that comes out of this is what we're going to use to cook the, the steaks with the rosemary and the garlic. So we're going to go into the pan. Um, George, with, yes. with regards to the steak, as you put it into that skillet, um, we've got a question yeah. from uh, Mark Eagle. Oh, Mark Engel. Sorry, Mark. Uh, Mark Engel is saying, if we got a big piece for four, how should we cut it? Well, I mean, I would cut it, cut it into half, and then cut each half into half. 
get, I think it would be for this stage, it's based if you're four people to cut four things, definitely. You know, yeah, like for two, okay. We Mark, I hope that answers your question. We could cook this piece, Sorry, whole, George, but it's, carry a, it's going to take longer to cook. I'm saying we could cook this piece whole, um, you know, and for families and socializing, you know, it's nice to have a big piece of meat you can slice up. If you know, we're making a specific dish, then it like it, again with the aubergines and the tomatoes, it's nice to have everything portioned because you know, although presentation doesn't change the flavor in any way, it's you know, it, it's it's what we're also what we're trying to achieve. We want to make attractive food, yeah. I just want to say, uh, George, that you know, with, with the partners that came on, um. Uh, uh, with their wines and, and looking and, and especially looking at the smoking pan with uh, the, the sirloin in there um, getting all caramelized and nice and smoky um, I must say that the Cab Sav that you've chosen to pair with this um, is certainly going to work well um, with all of those flavors developing in there definitely it's actually it's a delicious wine I'm enjoying it Maybe I have to walk across yeah. the hill more often. Friend the wine maker. Yeah, I think for me, for me with 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 um, the red wine, which I'm about to open up a bottle and you know uh, let it breathe a bit. Uh, I just wanted to wait for the steaks to go into the pan. Um, it's perfect timing for this. Uh, I've been enjoying uh, this white wine, uh, the Sauvignon Blanc, and especially talking about the vegetables that you've been doing and how the tomatoes and the aubergine. Yeah. Um, it's been going well. And I, I could taste them in my mouth, but I'm about to open that red and let it breathe while you're doing the steaks. Okay, so I, if you want to look in on the steaks here, you can see already there's a, maybe a half a centimeter of fat in the bottom of this pan, and you can see the steak is caramelizing while the fat is caramelizing. Okay, I'm going to flip it over once. Let's press it down a little bit. And, here. and then we're going to leave that to do its thing. I'm going to put a lid on here because we're going to smoke ourselves out. Like okay, yo, you don't want to set off the, sp uh, uh, the smoke uh, sprinklers yet. <laughs> yeah. I can see uh, our <laughs> smoke alarm is lying on the floor here, man. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> good old Jack. While the while the steaks are cooking, so I mean that's maybe maybe like a 300 gram each piece, maybe 250, 300 grams. We're gonna cook it for about four or five minutes. But while we're doing that, I just want to get our get everything together. And I think we can put everything on the same tray. And this it also helps when you're, you know, when it becomes time to plate up your food. See the cream spinach. I'm going to roll it into balls. The same size as the tomatoes and the aubergine. Oh, nice. I like how everything is all... Um, uniform and the same size and obviously uh, based on the presentation and also how you must um, just have everything together so that you get all the goodness combined into one um, but at this stage just to give a guide to the, the guys that are cooking with us um, how far in terms of timing are we to the plating of the final uh, the bringing together of everything how far are we uh, time wise I think we are um, five or ten minutes. It depends on how. Okay. How much? I mean, we're going to finish the steak. We're going to let it raise. <clears throat> yeah, I just want to. I'm going to turn the steak.
But before I turn it, I'm going to chuck in the four of the garlic cloves and the rosemary. And the rosemary you can put in put a couple in a hole, but also rip a few leaves off as well. You can immediately smell, it's quite intoxicating, the smell of charred beef fat and garlic and water. It really is. Yeah. So As I pour my wine and making sure that I'm ready for that steak when it comes out the pan. Okay, you can see the steak caramelized nicely. We want the same thing to happen on the other side. Give it a couple minutes. I'll roll, roll some more spinach balls. My son, um, he, met, he was matriculated last year. And uh, okay. because they had such long, they had such a long break of um, school, I got him working at Jordan, and we had this dish on at Jordan. Nice. Um, when he was up there, so this was his job. He was rolling spinach balls the whole way. It's you know, it's quite there. If you think <laughs> once you've done a hundred, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure now he can make all uniform and equal sizes with his eyes closed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, George, another question. I know that you chose uh, the sirloin for this dish, but um, any other um, prime cut um, steak that you could use instead of um, sirloin? Yeah, you could use... Well, I, let me start by why I chose sirloin. I, I mean, sirloin is probably my favorite. Sirloin or ribeye or rump, if it's the cat. Because, I, I mean, I love the fact. Um, I think rump, you know, every prime cut apart from fillet, it's got a bit, it's got its own texture, its own identity. I find tenderloins and fillets to be quite, um, you know, it's quite mushy for me. I'm not a big fan of that texture, you know. If it's got a lack of pepper sauce yeah. and a plate of chips, I'll enjoy it, but I would much rather enjoy it so long. You know, I can chew more. I've still got to yeah. So. Yeah, I, I, I feel you on that. I, I, I'm the same, you know. Um, I think fillet is it's my least favorite cut, and obviously because you know, we know that flavor comes from fat and also close proximity to the bone. Uh, but with fillet, I feel that, yeah. you know, everything else around it has to support it, you know, in order to make, you know, the main event, you know, um, proper. But uh, I mean, you know, fillet needs, is also uh, not on my top five steaks. Yeah. Okay, my steaks are done. <clears throat> so I'm just going to take a bit of plastic wrap. Uh, okay. Okay, and then each steak, I'm just going to wrap it. You can immediately see the plastic. To be honest with you, I normally use an old shopping bag for this man, but I didn't want to do that because I'll scare too many people. But you know, yeah, you want it, it retains the heat, it retains the moisture. We've got to raise that piece of meat, regardless of how big it is. You've got to raise it. Yeah, um, and I think that's a neat trick, you know, to keep the temperature and while letting it rest, because a lot of people get worried that if you resting a meat uh, or piece of meat that you just grilled, sometimes it loses temperatures and, you know, um, the heat. Uh, but we understand yeah. why we're resting it. Uh, but yeah, it's a neat trick uh, yeah. actually to uh, cover it in cling wrap. But before we go yeah, on to keep the, heat. the plating. Yeah. Yeah. But we, before we, we go on to... The the, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. While you make this, sauce, but I want you to hold up on 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 the plating before you could uh, plate, but then finish off the sauce. Okay, I'll, um, I'm just gonna. I want to keep this down. I'm gonna rinse it. Mm. 
You know, the reality is, <clears throat> I could have deplaced that pen with some of the um, seven by Gabi, uh, Gabi Savignon. They yeah. made a lack of sauce, but, the, but this, the soy, I'm making a soy butter. And it's really, it's really the most delicious, simple sauce for a steak you'll ever see in your whole life. So we keep the whole pan, and I'm going to put my soy in. And then into the soy, I'm just going to work in some small blocks of butter. Just going to put a touch of water in because uh, my soy evaporated. Okay. <clears throat> George, I just like what you just did there. You know, um, when the pan gets too hot or whatever that you have in it is, you know, uh, drying up a bit, it's always okay to take it off the heat and not try and catch up with uh, the fire. I like that because a lot of people make a mistake with that. If the pan is too hot, you can let it cool down a bit uh, before uh, you start burning things. I like that. Okay. So just a little bit of Yeah. So that was... Just like uh, yeah, half 30, a block 50. of butter, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's just the, it's the camera is making it look like it's so much <laughs> Nothing wrong with a little extra butter, the French would say. But then you, you can see now, because of the temperature and because of the constant movement, the bar is emulsifying with the soy. You can see how thick that's getting up. So it's not separating, it's a it's a homogenous. <coughs> delicious okay we're, i'm re ready for you whenever you're ready uh, nice to george just want to say it's been great watching you um do your thing in the kitchen especially with that steak and and um the trick with uh actually letting it rest while wrapping it with cling wrap um but we're gonna get the plating done in a few minutes from now um, but I just want to let uh, all of those that are cooking with us, um, I know that you've kept up and managed to um, get your plating um, ready. And I know some of you have been rushing, saying, my steak is done already, and, and, and. But now that we've got um, George doing things at his own pace and making sure that everything is uh, nice and lacquer to the T, uh, we're going to get to the plating. But I want to remind all of those that are cooking with us that, don't forget to enter the best dish competition. So what we require from you is to take a picture of your plated masterpiece after you've seen how George plates his, um, and also from getting the information on your recipe card. So all your creative juices coming out and, and making uh, a plate look nicer and, and better than you think it's gonna look um, when George does his, um, so take all of those pics and post them on Instagram with the hashtag live cook channel and tag us also um, at live cook channel on Instagram and you could win a case of wine and stay tuned to our socials um, where you our amazing audience will vote for their favorite dish from our short list of entries and we'll announce the winner on our platforms in April. So please, um, you can watch what uh, George is gonna do with his masterpiece and, and how he's prepared everything, or you can just let it go with uh, your creativeness and make your plate look lovely. And we'll get to vote for whoever has the best plate and they could win a case of wine. A case of wine, guys, the Zivenbach wine is the business. So uh, make sure that um, all of those uh, creative uh, 
uh, bits in your brain and your fingers and, and whatever, you know, uh, comes out and make your plate look uh, stunning. And who knows, you could win. So George, let's go on to your presentation. <clears throat> Okay, so let's let's just first of all have a little white button. So I think let's run through what we've got. We've got our tray ready with the garnishes, so the chard, the tomato, and the aubergine. I'm going to put this in the oven just to warm it through. I'm going to switch the oven off because there's enough heat in there. We've got our aubergine puree. Just going to cut. Well, you, you did get a piping bag in your thing. And I'm just going to check it that the whole, that's the size we're looking for. <clears throat> Try it. So, Am I, am I plating? Am I doing it? Yes, uh, please uh, just take us and talk um, through the plating um, while you do it. Okay, so the beef the beef is in the, is wrapped in the plastic. It's resting, it's relaxed, but it's still, there's, an, there's enough heat in this to eat. You don't have to warm it up again. So we'll just take off the plastic. And I'm going to cut one, two, three, five equal slices. Let's see how it's cooked. It's medium rare, but way aged straight from the bag. It's not going to have that dark red. If we left it in the fridge for a day or two, And then we go with the tomatoes. Okay, and then a bit of puree just to finish it off. The sauce, I'm just going to get a touch of heat in the sauce just because this batter is beginning to set. <clears throat> Wow, that's a beautiful looking plate, George. Man, salivating already. Benny, if only you were here, man. Can we finish it with this delicious soy bottle? Oh, very good. Mmm. Ooh. And that's it. Can you see where's the base to see it? Wow, George, that's a great looking plate, man. I wish I was there with you, uh, but I can't wait to tuck in. We're gonna go through to an ad and then we're gonna come back to this beautiful masterpiece that you just produced. Yeah, that's gonna go well with this lovely wine um, when we get back.
Well, thanks to Cadbury for um, these lovelies. We've got something to eat uh, and indulge in after enjoying George's masterpiece. Um, you'll be able to enjoy all of these uh, fantastic uh, chocolates once you finish doing um, uh, plating and also in, uh, eating this lovely creation that George just uh, created for us. Um, yeah, thank you to Cadbury uh, with all of these lovely things. Uh, but yeah, don't forget to book and join us for our next episode featuring the amazing, amazing chef Shane Sampson. You need to book to cook, go to Quick Quicket and secure your tickets. You get the ingredients for the recipe from our good friends um, at Daily Dish uh, that will deliver everything to you and make sure that everything that you need to create a masterpiece with our next superstar that's going to be cooking with us. And that is Shane um, Sampson. But um, George, your creation is is super amazing. Um, Hi guys, and so I'm Shawnee Sampson from A Peace Restaurant. I look forward to cooking with you on the 21st of April. Let's spice things up with my Moroccan dish. We'll be doing lamb with a chamula paste. And when you think spicy from A Peace side, we aren't necessarily just all about the hotness. We do include vanilla, nutmeg, chili, and turmeric. Please book to cook by the 15th of April. Well, that was Shanae Sampson. Uh, that is going to be our next superstar that's going to be cooking with us uh, and creating another memorable uh, moment and, and, and creating a masterpiece that we are all going to enjoy. But uh, the time now still belongs to uh, our superstar chef, George Jardine, that has made a super wonderful creation of, of um, grilled sirloin with um, aubergine puree, some roasted cherry tomatoes with a bit of garlic and some soy glaze and butter sauce that goes with that lovely wet egg steak from Karen Beef. Um, George, just want to say, man, that's a great creation and um, it's going to go really well with this wine. <clears throat> I know that you've been sweating in the kitchen and doing your thing. Cheers, uh, Benny. And not well, barely yeah. enjoying this wine, but yeah, man, thank you for sharing all the knowledge that you've shared with us. Uh, and, and it's beautiful. It's a pleasure. Oh, and I'm just going through all of these comments and how people are enjoying this. Um, it's been great. And, and, and thank you so much um, for everything that you've been doing uh, with us today. Uh, and it was great cooking with you. Um, yeah, man. Cheers. And as you wipe your cheers. brow uh, from being in the hot kitchen, yeah. Cheers. I can't wait to come through to um, your place and, and yeah, enjoy see when you're in uh, lovely steaks with you again. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Cheers, man. So, something to look forward to next month. Uh, we've got uh, two chefs that have been confirmed for May and Chef Liam Tomlin is going to be joining us doing his thing uh, in June and Chef Frank Dangero that has uh, that will be making a return, actually, because he was uh, our first live cook chef that entertained us. Uh, if you were with us from the very first episode last year, you'll remember um, Chef uh, uh, Frank. Uh, he does a whole lot of good things up in his uh, place in North Hook. Uh, can't wait to come and see him too. But those are the two chefs that are coming up for our next live cook show. So make sure that you tune in, you buy your tickets, and you join us um, so that we are able to cook with you uh, on the live cook again. Um, I can't stress much uh, the fact that uh, being in uh, this live cook show and cooking with people from all over the country at the same time has been such fun and obviously a learning uh, a, a portal for uh, all of our enthusiasts and chef wannabes. Uh, and, you know, interacting with big chefs like um, George that we did today and a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of list of chefs that we've cooked with um, can only, you know, prepare us for the next chef that's coming in uh, that's going to be doing wonderful things with us. Uh, George, once again, just want to say thank you. 
uh, and it's been great. We've had Cheers. fun. Uh, you've been sweating in the kitchen. I've been drinking here, but I can't yeah, wait to jump in to tuck into that steak. <clears throat> yeah, man. Thank you so much. And see you soon when you make your return and share your knowledge again with us. Cheers. Definitely. Thanks a lot. Huh? Cheers. Yeah. But for all of those that have joined us uh, on this um, Life Cook, once again, to our loyal Life Cookers, I uh, hope you to see you again soon. If you're a first timer, tell all your friends and tell them, man, come cook with us. It's fun. Uh, some people have burned their stuff. Some people have uh, dropped their glasses uh, with wine because they're rushing to, uh, you know, catch up with the cooking. But it's all fun. And I'm sure you enjoyed it. And hope to see you again when we cook again with uh, Shane, who's going to be doing wonderful things. Um, just like all of the chefs that have come before her, uh, thank you for joining us. And cheers. There's a bush fire raging outside my house And there's a bush fire raging inside my life Deep burning anger has come into my heart I decide not to break things Cause I've done that before and it doesn't work Who lit the fire?